working. Tell me about this vehicle you have over here. Well, here at the Polaris booth today, Sydney, we've got kind of the whole spectrum of what we would call the ultralight vehicle niche. It's the ability to deploy vehicles with light infantry or air mobile forces and provide them mobility once they get to the ground. Which, which may mean kick them out of the back of an airplane with a parachute. Could very well mean that, exactly. Uh, this is the dagger you, you need a robust suspension when you land, I imagine. You do. Uh, air certifiable is, or airdrop certifiable is often difficult to achieve, but we've got that uh, on a number of our vehicles. This is the Dagger vehicle in use with uh, U.S. Special Forces, a slightly larger vehicle than Polaris has fielded before. Uh, 4,500 pounds with a 3,250-pound payload. So how many fully armed Special Forces guys can carry in that carry? We've got four seats and, and one sling for the uh, weapons mount personnel, individual. And then we've got seats in the back should they need to put in additional people just to get them where they need to go. And these are pretty serious tires. I kick them, I might break my foot. All part of the suspension. You uh, design the suspension to integrate both the tires, the uh, A-arms, the geometry, and the shocks. So all of that plays into how off-road mobile this vehicle is. Now, is this one of the offerings for the Army Ground Mobility Vehicle, ULCV? This certainly fits into that realm, exactly. Uh, it's certainly what we would be targeting for that sort of market. Which is the big campaign to give some vehicles to the foot troops so that they can actually move quickly once they parachute in. Now what's this little guy? That's the MV850. It's built off our ATV chassis, um, but what we've done is we've upgraded uh, durability with the exoskeleton, the ability to carry payload as well. So you've got a 200 pound payload rack on the front, a 300 pound in the back, and then we've got the terrain armor, non-pneumatic tires preventing uh, flats and, and lack of mobility for that reason. And this is also in service with special operations, a bunch of allied countries? Both US and worldwide, yes. But your new baby, which you're rolling out of this show, is this diesel-powered vehicle. So why is diesel a big deal, a big difference? Well, there's kind of two defining characteristics of the vehicle, and you brought up one of them, which is exactly the fact that it's now GAP-8 or diesel capable. Heavy fuel enables you to go along with standard military forces, deploy it aboard um, airplanes, ships, and use the same single fuel that they're using in all of their other heavy vehicles. Makes it far more deployable and easy to support logistically. So same as the big trucks, as tanks, as other heavy vehicles like that? Exactly, exactly. It makes a single fuel on the battlefield that much more um, capable, e easy to deploy. And, and again, you, unless you're getting waivers, you can't deploy these things aboard ships or airplanes due to the flammability of, of standard gasoline. But with the JP-8 fuel, it allows them to deploy far more vehicles uh, in many different methods. So there is a safety issue, especially when people are shooting at you about gas versus diesel. Heavy fuel is far more beneficial in that scenario, yes. As in less explosive. Exactly. So what is the other feature you wanted to mention of this vehicle? Well, the, the driving factor behind the vehicle was the fact that it had to fit in a V-22. So the V-22 has a 60-inch by 60-inch cargo bay. So uh, long-range deployability, very, uh, very fast in the air but doesn't have a lot of cargo space. And so in order to get a vehicle in there, it needs to fit within that dimension. So the rollover protection system on this vehicle actually folds down, takes less than a minute with two, with, uh, two Marines or soldiers. You quickly break it down, throw it on the front of the vehicle and drive it on. Mm -hmm. But that enables you to deploy it quickly um, over a long distance and then when you get there, enables whoever you're dropping off for whatever reason to actually have some ability to support themselves on the ground, whether it's with fuel and water or ammunition or, or to medevac a casualty. Yeah, I see it. Is that the stretcher here that is set up? Uh, right. This vehicle can take two litters, depending on how you configure the rear cargo area. Um, and you take those longitudinally, which makes it far easier on the patient and on, on whoever's treating them to, uh, to keep them safe. So they're back, their spine is in line with the, with the direction of the travel. Vehicle. Yes, exactly. So you can get your hurt guys out of there in a hurry in a way you couldn't with just foot troops. Exactly. Taking far less people out of the, uh, out of the fight to treat the one or two individuals who are casualties. And you could use this to scout out or to just move guys quickly to a new position? Well, that's exactly right. This vehicle, that's the huge benefit to this vehicle is it's completely modular. You can do anything you want with it, whether you're relocating, say, a, a mortar position or a heavy machine gun um, or moving troops or quickly relocating or just going to get fuel and water. This vehicle um, has been found to just be extremely useful for the foot soldier who's used to carrying everything on his back from a mortar plate to a machine gun. Yeah. 
Now, obviously this is not a tank, but is it possible to mount a weapon on this? Uh, any number of weapons have been mounted on it already. Um, usually with swing arms on the outside, medium machine guns, uh, that sort of stuff. So yes, capable of mounting weapons in a number of different scenarios. So it might look a little Mad Max, but it gets the job done. Exactly. Thank you very much, Joaquin. I appreciate it. Thanks, Sydney.